bitch, and you and you see a, a an attack on the family uh, dynamic in black culture. Let's talk about that, man. Like what? Um, so you uh, do you counsel? Yeah, I do counsel people. I do counsel couples. I counsel families. Done a lot of premarital counseling sessions. Um, but yeah, I, and I think what I, what I find, man, is uh, communication in couples. It's bro. It is. We don't know how to communicate with each other. I was okay. Yes, sir. We, we don't. We don't. We haven't been taught. A lot of times, with our in our generation, the problem is we never saw. A lot of us never saw a marriage model in front of us to show us how to be husbands and how to be wives. So a, 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 a model is important. Anytime you want to emulate something or you want to to learn, you have to have a model. Mm-hmm. If we had no model, then you already have to now learn, be intentional about, okay, I didn't get this growing up. I didn't see a two-parent thriving marriage. So where am I going to get it from now? So I, I now got to find out, okay. Didn't see it in yeah. the household, barely seen it on TV, mm-hmm. really don't see it in the movies. So, how am I gonna learn? And what am I gonna? How am I know? You know. Yeah. So like. So you have to seek it out. You have to now seek it out. God and God is your first. God is our first. A, you know. Compass. Teacher, a compass, roadmap, guide. Because everything is in the Bible that tells you how to be a wife and how to be a husband. That's number one. Then after you read the Bible, that's in my faith. I know everybody don't believe in, in my same faith, but. You know, uh, you know, we're not here. To, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just throwing it out there, yeah. just from a faith perspective. So, that's my, that's what led my faith is, is in my understanding of how to be a husband is what is what the Bible told me about it. Right. You know, a husband loves his wife like Christ loved the church. Christ gave everything for the church. A husband is to submit to his wife, even at you know, what I'm saying a husband also to cover his wife, protect her, to prepare a place for her, to prepare a home for her prepare a home for them so if i'm gonna be that's my first example then you also have to go find somebody tangible somebody that in everyday life you can see all right this brother right here and i was thank i'm thankful i had a few models that i could see uh pastor david who lived with my cousin slash uncle uncle co- slash cousin who lived you know he's more, he's more like an uncle but he's technically a cousin but older and he was my pastor he lived right across the street from me so I got a chance to see him caring for his family right across the street. And I got a chance to see my my uh my god dad, Drew, who had uh brother Drew, shout out to him. He had a great family. I could still go down there to this day, for like Thanksgiving, Christmas. He's he's calls me and puts me in check. You know what I mean? So, or he or he'll call to give me advice or or have a listening ear. You need somebody that you can talk to to get an understanding. So it's like we can get past these communication barriers, but we have to understand how we how we were brought up, how these behaviors are affecting our our marriage. A lot of times we bring baggage into the marriage. So it, it's a it's a few different things we bring baggage into the marriage. No model bringing bag baggage into the marriage from previous relationships, you not healed from. You saw your mama always cursing your daddy out, or you saw your daddy uh, beating your mama, so you think that that's something you should do. So we bring in baggage, those things, unforgiveness. We have to deal on a spiritual level with all of the all of the baggage before we get to a spouse. Like I need to be healed. I need to have everybody I dealt with before this person out of my system. All soul ties, emotional ties to this person. Don't don't drag that into the marriage. Don't drag the way my mama and daddy do it into the marriage. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because half the time we we saw. Something that was something that wasn't flawed. Yeah, we saw something flawed, and we just want to think that that works. And it, and you know, it's take the good that did work, but the bad you throw out. Yeah, so, man. You that's, know. Okay, um, you 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 giving you giving jewels now. Um, communication is definitely a problem that I that I always had with women, and that kind of kept me single. Um, I also have communication problems because of how I was raised and um, being introverted, kind of just being um, orphaned at one point, uh, just being kind of, you know, able to ent- entertain myself 
um, I, I come from a very big family. I'm not the only child, but, you know, I sometimes move like I am. But I'm also very connected to a lot of people, like a lot. And I and I and I take responsibility. I take that responsibility serious. You know, uh, my friends is my family, and um, and you know, my family is even you know that means everybody's my family because human uh, the human race is my family at, at at that point because of the way I you know try to uh, model my life. You know, to, to treat everybody as you know what I'm saying. Uh, um, a brother until they uh, propose themselves as an enemy, that is. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it's just the communication barrier is one barrier that you would enter first. And then the model, me not having the model to look for, um, kind of gives me terrible traits to to give off when I do, um, uh, you know, get myself uh, involved with a woman. So I, I'm learning myself, brother, and I'm... Um, and again, that uh, what are the other things that you would say like that you would kind of like um, not necessarily model uh, your life from, but you know that kind of just feeds because uh, you talked about someone that was older. But what about uh, in your own peer group? I know you know we do have a, a strong uh, friend base. So do you ever confide in your friends as far as something that they, that they can more so relate to because the art older elders didn't have to deal with social media mm -hmm. you know and yeah it's not yeah i do have a, a a few friends that i confide in like when i'm going through different things because you know what i'm saying i've been married 11 years but it has not been easy you know what i'm saying i'm not gonna paint the picture like it's been just so easy um so but at the same time marriage shouldn't i don't preach that marriage should be hard either see some people think that marriage should be all about the suffering and just you have to put up with all this kind of stuff. And um, the thing about it, man, when you just with marriage, you have to make the right selection the first time. I think a lot of times we get married out of for many different reasons that are not the right reason to get married. And therefore, you find out later and you're ready to leave. So the first thing you do when you're seeking a, a wife or a husband is you have to ask the Lord, is this the one for me? It's, and you have to really, you know what I'm saying, go about it from a spiritual standpoint because the Bible teaches us that um, fathers provide houses and inheritance, but a good wife comes from the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you listen to what that proverb is saying, it's saying basically God gives you a wife. So if you let God give you your wife, you're going to have a thriving marriage. But half the time what we do is we go just pick somebody because they they physically attractive or they make a certain amount of money or, you know what I'm saying, we, I just we, see this we, person. We live here. You know we live saying? here. Or we work here. you convenient. It's, all, it's, it's reasons that are not enough to keep you married for the long haul because if it ain't built on, for one, God's, you know, choice for you is going to be hard. Y'all might not even be compatible. You might not even like the same things. You might not even like that person outside of y'all going on dates and stuff. So you have to kind of get to the point where I, right, who, you know what I'm saying? Selection. So am I equally yoked with this person? Do we believe the same thing? Are we going in the same direction? Will this person support me? Will this person be my friend, my, my, my partner? Can I lean on them? Can I trust them? You know what I'm saying? Uh, compatibility chemistry all uh, selection is so 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 key in marriage and, and staying together you know what i'm saying so i i say start there first and then you know we can talk about the healing and therapy all that work through your issues counseling therapy go to it before you get married get that stuff out of your system and out of your spirit before you get married go to go sit on somebody's couch before you get married and deal with all your trauma your your emotional traumas in the baggage in the baggage and then um i i've just preached a message recently called where is home and what i found out and part of me um studying for that you know to deliver that message you know i talked about families and marriage i talked about you know we talk about home home is where you're from you know what i mean home is like okay you're from duval that's what your jacksonville yeah. is your home atlanta is my home 
um your your marriage is a is a is a home your your house you actually go to every day is that's a home um so your spouse is a home you yourself are are a home and in terms of what's in you like all the gifts they housed in you all yeah. your talents your abilities your skills the spirit of god is in you housed in you you are you yourself you have a soul you have a body um you have a spirit all these have a home inside your body. You, you are gotta a home. Take care of that home. You gotta take care of this home. Like I can't tear this home down. Like with everything around. Like you know, in terms of all the things out here that, that it come to tear this house right here down. My physical house. I gotta exercise, eat right. I gotta take care of my marital home, my marriage, because that's a home. Um, when we experience so many marital problems, like. 41, so my studies led me to find that 50, almost 50% 50 of the marriages that start out end in divorce. You got all of these people over 50 divorcing now. So that means half their life, now they starting over. So what is that saying to us? These are people married together, but still have not found home yet. They haven't found their sense of belonging. They haven't found, or either they had it and lost it, or they're still searching. Can you imagine like you in a marriage some people stay married 20 years, and then after the kids go to, high, go to college, they'll do it then. But they'll stay married. So you've been married all that time and still haven't found your place, still don't feel at, haven't home. Found at home. You ain't feel at home. And yeah. what, what, what comes against us having home in this peace? Anytime you strip away peace, love, joy, acceptance, and respect and honor from the relationship, you are destroying that home. You are destroying it. So then now that person going to go out and search for it elsewhere. Like they can't find the peace. It's supposed to be an abundance of peace in the marriage. You're supposed to have more than enough. You're supposed to be bathing in it. <laughs> like, you know I mean? like, I can't, you know what I mean? I, I got so much, I, I can give it away. But yet these marriages are void of peace, peace of mind, like peace with each other, friendship. And so, in turn, they go find it in other places. Some people find it at a bar on Monday Night Football with their homies. Some people find it with another relationship on the side with a side piece. Some people find it because my side piece ain't fussing all the time. She ain't, you know what I mean? She ain't yeah. fussing. She ain't giving me no headache and all the blues. And Some she, people find it in their work. Some people find it in their work. So now, oh, he worked too much. He always working. He don't never come home and take care of me. And kid. He, why you... He, he, he's peaceful in that place because you nagging and fussing at the house. And, and why, you, you know, so the Bible says it's better for a man to dwell on a rooftop than in a house with a nagging woman. That's what the Bible says. So why he said, the Bible said it is better to dwell on a rooftop in solitude than in a house with a person that's nagging you all the time, always arguing and fussing. Want to argue. Yeah, you want to all go. So it's, find your peace. Find your peace, man. Give that person peace. So I'm just basically saying to round it all off, be the source of that person's greatest peace. And then a lot of these marriages will stay together. Be the source of that person's greatest joy, not the biggest subtractor of it. Then these marriages will stay together and the families won't be broken up. 